By completing this lesson, you will be able to describe how books and printed material were made prior to the Renaissance, including what languages they were written in and who had access to them. You'll be able to explain how the printing press changed the way books and printed materials were made and the impact this had on the availability of information. And you'll also reflect on how important it can be to easily share ideas in order to bring about change. Let's get started. What makes a book a book? Is it just anything that stores and communicates information? Or does it have to do with paper, binding, font, ink, its weight in your hands, the smell of the pages? Is this a book? Probably not. But is this? To answer these questions, we need to go back to the start of the book as we know it and understand how these elements came together to make something more than the sum of their parts. The earliest object that we think of as a book is the codex, a stack of pages bound along one edge. But the real turning point in book history was Johannes Gutenberg's printing press in the mid-15th century. The concept of movable type had been invented much earlier in Eastern culture, but the introduction of Gutenberg's press had a profound effect. Suddenly, an elite class of monks and the ruling class no longer controlled the production of texts. Messages could spread more easily, and copies could constantly be produced, so printing houses popped up all over Europe. During the Middle Ages, books were written out by hand, mostly in monasteries. Often the monks would spend years on a work. Then, in 1450, an invention changed the world. In the German city of Mainz, Johannes Gutenberg invented the technique of printing with movable type. This made it possible to duplicate books in large numbers and at relatively low cost. The technological foundation was laid for the intellectual, political and religious changes of the succeeding centuries. Books needed to be cheaper and more quickly available. But that wasn't all. In particular, scholars wanted uniform copies a new production technique was feverishly sought after. And one of the seekers was Gutenberg. In 1446, he returned to Mainz. Here, he found solid financial backers, allowing him to go ahead with his enterprise. His breakthrough came with a brilliant idea. He broke up his text into its constituent parts, letters, punctuation marks, and frequent combinations known as ligatures. These were then combined to form the blocks for printing words, lines, and pages. The characters were cast and could be used in new combinations time and again. Gutenberg's first printed works were official documents, papal decrees, and grammars. But soon he started on a mammoth venture, the Latin Bible. For this project, he cast more than 100,000 pieces of type. For more than two years, Gutenberg's typesetters and printers worked on the first edition of 180 copies. With his Bible, one of the world's most beautiful printed books, Gutenberg proved that a work printed with movable type could be as aesthetically pleasing as one written by hand. Knowledge of this revolutionary technology was quick to spread. Soon the first printing presses were set up in Cologne, Bamberg and Basel. In Venice, an enterprising publisher named Aldus Manutius began to print the works of the classical authors. His clientele comprised the whole of Europe's humanistic intellectual elite. Manutius employed the most talented printers of the age. 
they developed the typeface known as Antiqua, which soon spread throughout Europe. Twenty years after Gutenberg's invention, the new technology was firmly established. Thousands of titles were marketed in editions of up to 1,000. Books now became affordable for ordinary people. As society grew more literate, the number of potential readers increased. One of Gutenberg's greatest admirers was the reformer Martin Luther. The new art of printing gave him a bright and bold idea. The layman didn't need a priest to tell him what the Bible said. He could read it himself and decide for himself between revealed truth and the false interpretation put about by the church. So Luther had more than half a million copies of his German translation of the Bible printed, a huge number for those days. And to disseminate his Protestant message, he had hundreds of thousands of leaflets distributed. The first daily newspaper appeared in Leipzig in 1650. Ein Kommende Zeitungen, it was called, roughly breaking news. And it came out six days a week. But the triumphal march of the newspaper did not really begin until steam-powered rotary printing presses appeared in the 19th century. And the offset process ushered in a radical transformation of printing technology.